they were crazy. You guys hear the refrigerator make a the compressor? He'll make an appearance. It's yeah, kind of two or three times. Just, everybody's yeah. always like. He's keeping that yeah. one lonely beer just yeah that ice cold. house has got that stay fucking cold. fridge <laughs> that's the thing that thing that like is the thing Indiana Jones hit in during the nuclear yeah. hot that thing will yeah, survive the line one yeah. yeah it's seen some horrible horrible things so it can survive God, a nuclear nuclear things. Blast, huh? yeah. it they, could survive they a had lot the, more the than freezer that. had a bunch of uh, belted Galloway meat in it okay. and the door accidentally got left open in the middle of July. Ooh. And I no came into the studio, and week. I was like, what? And I smelled it when I got here, and I was like, what is, you know, it's a country, dead shit. Yeah. And I came in here, and I was like, oh, my God, did a fucking cat <laughs> die in the attic? And I'm, like, looking around, like, walking around, what the fuck is that smell? And then I walk, I mean, I, I passed the fridge, like, three times. And I, like, caught out of the corner of my eye, the door is open, and it looked like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fridge. I was like, oh, my just God. Me. It was like oh, flies. Wow, just disgusting. I was like, yeah, sweet Dahmer style. Lord. Dude, I yeah, I fucking napalm that with Korox. Like, no, it was it sat outside for probably about two weeks because it yeah, I it mean it needed an exorcism, amongst other things. Survived. Yeah, yeah, we're rolling right. Yeah, yeah, I figured we had been. Uh, Spark and plug talks. This is uh, an episode, and we've got a familiar face here. If you've uh, if you're one of our three or four long time listeners, then you know uh, you've listened to Luke Roundtree, you watched Luke Roundtree, and he brought back the boys with him. And I'm real happy to introduce Luke himself, Gilson, John, and Ryan. Adam's with us in spirit. He's playing keys, but he's with us in spirit. Boys, thank you guys so much for coming out. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Thanks to Luke for for uh, uh, yeah, go crazy, go. Ah, we need that. Um, we need the pad with the built in of. The audience effects, the little MIDI pad. Yeah. I, yeah, I need the little button thing. But um, thank you guys so much for coming out and making the time. Uh, congrats on the baby, dude. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you. Um, thank you very much. The, yeah. It's oh, yeah, we, fantastic. we had to reschedule the, the well, last it, one, yeah. Yeah, and I would say... Totally understandable. I, well, yeah. I would say out of out of excuses for not making it to a spark and plug, having a kid's pretty high up on the good excuses list. So you get a pass this time, Gilson, but next kid, it's it's... It's not happening. Yeah. When So just so you know, just so you know, you're on thin ice, buddy. But yes, I appreciate you guys so much for coming out. Uh, they just got done playing three fantastic songs for us. You'll see them on the spark and plug on our regular episode. I'm pretty sure this uh, we're all cut up, caught up. So um, episode should come out uh, this next week. So. Should be awesome. So as as you're listening to this, this drops at like 6 a.m. on Friday morning. Um, you should be able to catch their full episode at noon. It'll be absolutely fantastic, as they always are. Uh, you guys played a show at Resident Head last night, right? We did. Yeah. Yes, we uh, did. You guys have played there a couple times? Yeah, that was our second time. To yeah. Be there. Is, it, uh, is it awesome? I have not been. I haven't. I have not gotten the uh, chance to go down there and check it out, but everybody said it's a pretty awesome venue. Yeah, it's it's really neat. They have a really cool feel and uh, vibe in there, and and then there's just really good people. Patrick and Caleb were in our sound last oh, night, right on. And, and uh, they're just yeah, they're they know how to run the place, and it's cool because it's the forgive me, it's like the old um, Opry. When yes, you Gilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so. in the same building as the, the old Opry is like right next door, right. and it's in a space right next to it that's been like all kinds of stuff, like a department store. I think it was like the old lobby for the Opry there for a while. And then in the back is old blood noise. So it's like you're just surrounded by a bunch of good Oklahoma. Yeah. (laughs) They're definitely cooking some stuff. Yes. Yeah. How's uh, the good, the big question is how are the, how well were the keys mixed? Adam's not here to attest to it. So (laughs) we just lowered it all down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) That seems to be the sign of like a really good place is if they can mix the keys well, then you know you're in good hands. That's true. That's true. Well, fantastic. Guys, if you don't go uh, mind uh, going around just saying your name and kind of what you play, that way people can put a name to the face. Favorite color, favorite food. Yeah. Uh, what you like to do on Saturday afternoons. Your political affiliation, your religion of choice. No, just, Social we'll security number. Yeah, so, yeah all, all that, that good yeah. stuff. Well, I guess I'll start. My name's Ryan. I play drums. My favorite color is blue or black. My favorite food is probably pad thai or pizza. And I like doing podcasts on Saturday afternoons. So, wow. Uh, it sounds right, like a match made in heaven. <laughs> we just so happen to have some pad thai. <laughs> Wait, really? Hey, I'm John. Uh, I play bass. Let's see if I can top Ryan's awesome list. I like tacos. That's my favorite food. 
Um, Fantastic. Light blue is my favorite color. Nice. And that's all you need to know about me right now. That is all you need to know, yeah. (laughs) People who are wondering more, get out of here. (laughs) I'm Gilson. I play guitar. Uh, Favorite color is a nice, nice teal. Mm. Yeah. You and Aaron are going to get along. Wow. You guys share like a... Me and Luke were like, oh, God, here they go again. They were studioing it off uh, <laughs> earlier. Guys they were, were just, they were just, no, 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 I can't even mimic it. I dude, try not to. I'll, <laughs> no, I'll waste just, a lot of time. I'll just give it a good <laughs> shit. I will waste so much time. It was like watching two mechanics, you know, talk about a car or something like that. It <laughs> yeah. Just... It's, well, I give Aaron shit sometimes because he'll, he'll, he loves his pedals. He loves his pedals. And I, understandably, I, I, you know, I understand why a man would love his pedals, but, I don't really care that much about pedals. Neither does my wife, and she doesn't really care about listening about it either. So (laughs) I I gotta tell him sometimes. I'm like, man, I'm glad you're passionate about something, buddy. I'm glad you found that hobby, but I I, that's not mine. So maybe tone it down just a little. Stop me. Really getting into it. It's just you and YouTube. I just gotta get it out. You know, I was like, let's let me get it out. Just you and YouTube talk about it all the time, don't you? Yeah. Just this YouTube channel, this YouTube channel, everybody. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> get it out that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll do it that way. Yeah. So, the, so uh, Teal's favorite code, what do you do on a Saturday afternoon? Saturday afternoon, uh, record a podcast and, uh, you know, little video set. Wow. Yeah. Man. This is like just Odd coincidence. Keep on getting better and better. Yeah. The, I couldn't have picked a better crowd. I Uncanny. guess this worked out pretty well. That's right. That's right. The, uh, Luke, how, um, how did this band come about? How did you, I assume, you had these songs, yeah. And then, were you always like, "I want to take these songs and and kind of put them in a band arrangement"? Yeah, they they definitely start acoustic piano, and then uh, Ryan and John. Um, back when we were younger, and Ryan was a, a young child, um, a teenager. We had a band. I, I kind of talked about that last yeah. time we were yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So these two guys were part of it, and so when I was thinking about hey i'm going to record these these two like my first choice just because of the the chemistry and the uh we just have kind of the same i guess they know how to um listen to my vague uh communication yeah there you go well that's (laughs) uh that you guys are checking the tom petty the three things uh list right it's uh if the money's good, the hang's good, and the music's good. There yeah. you go. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You can have two out of the three, and it'll be a good band. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I knew I'd start there, and uh, and then uh, Gilson came along through just like, I was just literally Google searching, where am I going to record this? Because I knew I needed to do the drums somewhere. Um, originally thought I was going to do it all at home and stuff. So um, found Gilson, and uh, we went met, and then we did the drums, and it was just like... He immediately caught on to what we were doing and saw yeah. um, the vision for it, and then also kind of helped get it there as well when we went through the process. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where these guys came from. Yeah, right. And Gilson, you own Thirty Third Street Studios, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right on. Uh, Ryan, I noticed you play open-handed. I do, left-handed. Was that a was that a conscientious? choice on your part or were you, did you watch carter beaufort too and you were like i want to be him it was a, a suggestion by my drum teacher back in the day okay right um on. just as far as like when you're backlining kits it's much easier to just use a regular setup instead of flipping it around oh i got you and okay like yeah it, it it's definitely more. fucks with my mind when i'm watching yeah because so, i'm i'm almost pissed off i'm like <laughs> i'm trying to enjoy you and now i'm like confused by what your my brain has to be rewired uh, i think aaron can attest to that i think we've expressed the same sentiment yeah he's yeah. <laughs> just like it's like a weird twilight zone type yeah, yeah. i'm kind of like going cross-eyed or something i've heard a lot of people say how weird it looks but it grants a certain amount of freedom um to oh be able to like yeah, open things for up. sure. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, cool. it's like I, I referenced Carter Beaufort, but uh-huh. that, the right. uh, I think anybody who plays open handed, that's like a you watch that those VHS tapes from the '90s he did of the Dave Matthews, uh-huh. and it's like a oh my god, I've never seen someone play so good in a wetsuit yeah. and open handed. <laughs> you know, I I can't do. I start going cross. I can't even think about like keeping. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yeah. So nah, the way he plays a ride and can also play. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's too much, yeah. but. I take it you you played it in stride, man. I mean, well, it, you. it sounded great. I mean, you guys you guys obviously practice a ton. Uh, I can tell you guys sound fantastic, and I didn't even have the full mix or anything like that. I just had you and Luke, you know, yeah. screaming in my ear, and it was fantastic. That's so. the way it started. We were talking about that last night. Is is uh, John 
was able to kind of hear and write all his parts with just Ryan and an acoustic guitar. And so uh, it's kind of an attestment. We, we don't practice a whole lot. So it's just an, an uh, statement of who well, kind of musicians well these guys well are. Well seasoned, I yes, should say. That's, yeah. that's what these guys are. That's what I'm trying to say. Is, right on. Yeah. And John, you play a uh, fretless bass, right? Uh, yes, sir. Where was that? Uh, sir, Jesus, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do me that dishonor. I mean, Keeping I'm not... it formal. Okay, all right. The uh, On a Saturday afternoon, all right. The uh, You play fretless bass. Was that inspired by it, or did you just like the feel of it? I've played fretless a couple times, and I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if I could get used to it. Yeah. I like it. It lets you express more. You can throw the vibrato in there all the yeah. time. and. Well, I love like, Jeff Amit, you know, from Pearl Jam. Yeah, I love, yeah, and he yeah, plays fretless yeah, all the time, yeah. and it and it definitely lends a, I don't know, man. It lends like a lot of their songs have a certain vibe to them that is pretty much impossible to replicate without that very s- specific fretless bass sound. Yeah, I remember when I was in high school, like listening to Pearl Jam and like Even Flow. As I got my bass out, trying to play Even Flow, and I'm like, it just doesn't, you can't, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but. My biggest fretless inspiration was Pino Palladino from the 80s. Okay. Like, he did tons of studio work in the 80s. Uh, some of his standout songs are like uh, In a New York Minute by Glenn Frey. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, right on. Classic fretless bass line. And yeah, he's kind of like the bassist to Jeff Pecoro's drumming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the 80s yeah. and everything. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of why. I don't know, and I don't play fretless all the time, but Okay. For this stuff, I thought it would lend yeah, itself no, well. Yeah, dope, yeah. man. Well, it's just unique because, like, you know, it's just not that common. You know, it's not that common. It sounds super cool if you're good, and that's, you know, what it all boils. It's like, I don't know. I've seen, like, uh, God, I think my my grandpa bought a fretless bass, some Rickenbacker, like, fretless. You know, he was like, oh, why not? You know, the cats in the 60s, they sounded awesome. You know, whatever, and uh, he played it a little bit, and I was like, I don't know, man, you kind of sound like ass. You know, I don't know if you should continue <laughs> to play that. And uh, so I've seen people that do not know what they're doing, but um, it's definitely a testament uh, to sticking to it. That's for sure. Cause I don't know, like I said, I played it a little bit and I was like, not for me, not for me. And but that, uh, that bass ahead. is pretty new, right? Like you just got that a couple months ago. Yeah. That was my Christmas present to myself. <laughs> nice. As everyone needs to yeah, do. Yeah. yeah exactly. Treat yourself. Yeah. When you get a certain age, you can start buying your own crap for yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Well, tell me when that age hits, because it ain't hit yet. Yeah, I, I still got another decade or so, I think, before I'm finally like, yeah, I'm getting a nice kit. Damn it, I'm I'm just splurging. I'm getting a nice kit this Christmas. What uh, well, what what um, what did you guys, Ryan? What did you start? What what are some of your influence and stuff like that? I mean, you said the guy from the '80s, the bassist from the '80s, John. But what about you, Ryan? Where where are you Hon- kind of coming from? Honestly, I can't really say I have a lot of influences as far as drummers go um but i can tell you a lot of band influences but i mean i don't really have a lot of drumming influences yeah kind of yeah. carving your own way yeah nice though, man. Yeah. what are some of the band influences um i mean i've gone through a bunch of different phases but you know i've i've liked arcade fire in the past i've liked uh oh man and i just i just had they to kind of fell off yeah the, they did the, i don't know they were so huge well when, and that's that's like I was just having this conversation with someone the other day. Just it's hard to tell my favorite bands more so like favorite albums is yeah. easier. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, and that kind of goes with RK Fire too. Right on. Yeah, they definitely had a stretch there. It was like two or three albums that were uh-huh, every really single ones. track is. I mean, awesome. their, the other debut album, one like Funeral. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, that's one of my all time favorite albums. Wait, was it that was that their first album? No, oh, Suburbs. I, guess, I was thinking of Suburbs. Never mind. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that's yeah. their first. But that's that the one that won everything. Yeah, they yeah. won yeah. Grammy with that one. Well, yeah. they were so, and they were doing those like the shit where they were like putting stuff out in the desert and doing like people were finding it and was mm-hmm. like, "What is this?" You know, it was like a like a marketing deal, and they were like doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then it was like, yeah, they just died after mm-hmm. that. I just, I don't know. Then all of a sudden, like Coachella is booking them as like the is like the eighth headliner on their day yeah. or whatever. And when they headline Coachella, like. 10 years earlier or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe not even that much. Maybe five or six. I don't know. It's just weird. Pretty noticeable. I think that's what happens when you win a Grammy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. we can curse. You can take, no, you can take a break and like, oh, and yeah. then come back. And I guess, yeah, man. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't, because normally like, LCD Sound System kind of did that. You know, they, mm-hmm. they did that right. grand like finale thing and then they mm-hmm. went away and then they came back. But I feel like they came back and they were like, even big, like people wanted 
more. Yeah. Like they're like, yeah. oh, you know, and then they started headlining, you know, smaller level festivals like Innings Fest and, and you know, just stuff like that. But like Arcade Fire came back and everyone was kind of like, oh, you know, go away. You yeah. know, we don't. And it's just weird. They're an odd. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's that. Anyways, yeah. my history of Arcade Fire is shaky <laughs> at best, but I've just noticed, I just noticed, picked that up when, they, like that Coachella thing, they they did, some band dropped out and they picked them up and they were like third or fourth headliner on their day when they literally headlined Coachella like mm-hmm. six years before. I don't know. Just to show how quickly things can change. You know what I'm saying, Gilson? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I just see you shaking your head over there. Well, what about you, Gilson? Where are you kind of coming from musically? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit like Ryan in the way of like I, I've guitar is my main instrument. I've played for a long time. Have never really had a um, I don't know guitar influence or anything like that. It's yeah. always just been music. Um, funny enough, Nintendo music has been yeah. like one of why my not? one of my biggest influences uh you that's know that's why you're always playing mario on the guitar yeah <laughs> mario donkey kong country makes sense now. It's did you one, like it's the um i love the donkey uh, kong soundtrack the like dude aquatic yeah uh, aquatic <laughs> level. it's so good <laughs> but, it, and now it's like all the nostalgic songs and but i was like man i used to love that when i was a kid yeah. that was like my favorite level yeah they have some great dude, 8-bit songs the um the the quality of the sounds on that game are incredible for like the 16-bit super nintendo oh, or whatever yeah, yeah, it is yeah. like you compare listen to like any other music on other games and then go listen to that huge difference i'm gonna have it's, to do that i've never cool. yeah i've never the, really the guy, done that the guy david wise developed like this synthesis method that he could use on the you know the the game cartridges yeah. to achieve that it's it's super interesting really yeah that is really interesting i gotta check that out because now that you say it, it does kind of feel like they're doing like, it again. yeah did you guys ever play booger <laughs> hold on you guys stop <laughs> yeah. somebody sit in between them this was horrible putting them right beside you <laughs> <laughs> just give you shit hey we'll, we'll create a sub mix so you guys <laughs> can talk about <laughs> your shit. the uh tell me more about the 16 bit can you turn <laughs> them down in my ears yeah, yeah. gilson have you ever listened to um the are you familiar with the video game um it's like an 8 bit platformer but it's newer uh the Scott Pilgrim versus the World jumper game that came uh, out like 10 I, or 15 years ago yeah i'm familiar with it but i've never played There's, it haven't well, listened to it um the soundtrack the entire soundtrack was done by um was done by a band that replicated that that's like they're all a mix of like the 8 bit style with like a f- few modern like kind of edms they're called like tama tamaguchi or something like that anyways okay. they i didn't know if you had heard of it or whatever because no, they're no. kind of they're cool man i i vaguely remember i was on a kick of video game soundtracks when i was younger for there for like a year or whatever where i was just finding really cool video game soundtracks and uh, a lot of people like that one because it's so the entire soundtrack is all like eight bit uh um, mm, this is like yeah. under, you know undertale yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they have a they have a really good. Uh, what was that? Is like Tony Fox or something or something Fox? I think it's Tony Fox, but like he like uh, he made the whole game, developed the whole game, and wrote the whole soundtrack for it. And it's like it's actually kind of a cool soundtrack. You know, that's pretty interesting. I know the. And it's all like in sixteen bit too. It's yeah, really cool. that's really cool. It's like the Goldeneye soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I I watched a whole like ten minute breakdown of one guy finding. You know, there's like in that sound yes. and the guy was like what is this sound i have to find that sound and he was like 10 minutes of him searching for it and it was like a he finally found it at the end and he was like oh my god this is what it is and it was like a it was this old keyboard and it was a reverse like cowbell noise on the lowest uh part of the keyboard and he was like, this is what it is. He's like, that's what it is. And the he posted it, and the composer for GoldenEye was like, you did it. You found it. Or something like yeah. that, like commented on there or whatever. I've seen that same video. There's one guy that found the Taco Bell. Boom. Yeah. It was like, on yeah. Yamaha. Was it like a DX7 or something DX7, like that? Yeah. yeah. Like, we found the fucking Taco Bell. It was like, dong. Yeah. <laughs> so mainly, uh, okay, well, I that's mean, really that's, interesting. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, I think I heard you guys talking about them earlier, too. Zappa. Uh, mm-hmm, yeah. I went through a huge Zappa phase there yes. for a while. Well, yeah. my grandpa was like, um, he made me like sit down and listen to the entire 35 minute is like Billy the Mountain um, little EP, live EP or whatever, where there's only one song and it's just 35 minutes of, and it's called like Billy the Mountain and it's an entire song. That's the holy Frank Zappa EP. 
and uh, there's like six insane drum solos. That yeah. really <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's well, good, that's a good grandpa. Well, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I was like, "Cramps, come on, man! I'm, I'm 15 or whatever." Like, he's like, "Listen, the whole damn thing, it's gonna blow your mind." And it was, it, yeah, it was mind blowing in a way. But uh, You're 15, it, I'm gonna go home and watch Mansers. He, or something. Well, I was like, "Dude, just let me out of here," you know. But it was cool. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was, and then I went and I really love the uh, Zappa album that where they all, uh, it's about Nanook and oh, it, apostrophe. Yeah, apostrophe. Yes. Yeah. I love that album. Nanook runs it. That cracks me God, up every time wrong, I listen dude. to it, man. Have you guys listened to that apostrophe by Frank Zappa? I haven't. Dude, yeah. you guys got to listen to that thing because it's hilarious. It's like about a Eskimo named Nanook and he like fights this. What he fights uh, a fur a, trapper. A, a he fur fights trapper. a fur trapper. Yeah, and then he like his mom tells him don't eat the yellow snow, and then they go to a Saint Alfonso's Pancake Parish. Yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you got. Was it a fur trapper? Or was it? It was a fur no, it's salesman like or something. Fur trapper. A, a fur Strictly trapper. Yeah. commercial. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's fantastic. You guys got to listen. It, it is hilarious. It's fucking right. funny as shit. What's your uh, What's your like top three favorite albums of all time, Gilson? Oh man. Uh, okay. Um, up there is definitely going to be KK and his weathered underground self-titled. Uh, they're this band from Seattle. Um, they had two records. The first one came out like, Oh eight, something like that. And it's, it's this really cool mix of like, ah, dude, genre bending. I mean, there's some like, I feel like it's like Baroque pop psychedelic soul. All kinds of shit. Uh, I mean, it is, it's incredible. Uh, it's, it's a mind blowing album. It was actually the moment listening to that record. It was just like, I want to do music. Like, how seriously? You find out about it? Uh, one of my buddies somehow found it. I had okay. no idea how he showed it to me and, uh, definitely changed my life. Um, they've, they've got a bunch of members that went on to do cool stuff. One of their guys is in Portugal, the man. Oh, nice. Um, super cool band oh. too. Yeah. 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 Super yeah. They're awesome. Um, so that, that one's probably number one for me, just how, how meaningful it is for me to this day. Um, also up there's probably got to be, um, white China gold, uh, babes, their second record. That's another guy from that band, uh, went off and did his own thing. It's a little bit more like R and B soul kind of sexy. Got uh, like a hardcore man crush on these guys from Seattle. I'm, no, dude, I'm, I'm saying, yeah. Uh, and then on the other, on the other side of that, something like pretty different would probably be like, man, I mean like revolver Beatles. Okay. I know okay. that I mean, one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no Taylor Swift. No, mm. she, she's a Not little, a didn't make the top three. Okay. Yeah. Maybe top five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's Virginia. cruel yeah. summer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> What about what about you, John? You got a favorite album or anything like that? It's always good, you know. It's I'm flushing out the person in real time. Man, my favorite album. Uh, I like Revolver a lot by the Beatles. That's a great one. I also like uh, Let It Be by the Beatles. That's an awesome. Uh, but I like Jamiroquai, like their early oh, stuff oh, with nice. Stuart nice. Zinder on bass. Yeah, like uh, Return of the Space Cowboy. Right on. Stuff like that. Okay, okay. Did, have you guys watched the uh, the Beatles documentary? The one on uh, which one? Uh, the, get back. The, yeah, yeah, get back. Oh, okay, because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's like the oh, McCartney three two yeah, one yeah, too. You're, that's you're super right. cool. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. with Rick Rubin. Get back is the one where they had like they found all the they the archival. archive. Yeah, it's yes. incredible. It's yeah. fucking yeah. cool because you, they you can see them right get back in real time. Like yeah. Paul McCartney, like you see their part. It's really interesting. It's, it's cool. like Aaron said. It kind of made me realize they were just dudes writing. It's just music, dudes, you know. Yeah. Just dudes being guys. There's no secret sauce or you know pick a destiny or anything. It's just a couple guys hanging out. What about uh, what about you, Ryan? What's uh, favorite uh, albums? Yeah, what's uh, what's I mean, you I named mean, the yeah, funerals up there for sure. Honestly, Dark Side of the Moon comes around every time. Like I think that's just a masterpiece of an album. Um, uh, there's some broken social scene albums that I really like. Um. Yeah, that's all I got for now. Yeah, for I'll sure. I'll remember a lot more later on yeah, after yeah, this is over. Yeah, definitely. Just text the hotline. Just blare them out real quick. <laughs> Have you guys, uh, how long have you guys all been uh, playing together? Uh, us four. 
I guess we're coming on it close to a year. Okay. Um, if yeah. So and then Adam, he played the last two shows with this. Oh, right on. So, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I think the first time I really played with you guys was like the country radio recording. Your studio, is that right? Yeah, that's when we kind of actually played. Yeah, I think that may have been the first time we played the actual songs. Everybody, including myself, I think yeah. it was like, together. Not not recording them right. separately. Yeah. How was the recording process? Did you guys find it pretty smooth? <laughs> What'd you guys think? <laughs> yeah, it, it was interesting. I mean, because we just we first started on drums and like. The songs were written, but the parts weren't there. Okay. So it was a little difficult to, like, I had to kind of imagine, like, okay, what would the bass be doing right here and I gotcha. stuff like that. Okay. But, I mean, overall, I think it went really smoothly, and everyone's so talented. So, so uh, but you guys recorded the first stuff live, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, right beside each yeah. other. Okay. And how was that? It was good. Good. We had, good. Yeah, we had You spent... guys seem very well seasoned with the click, so that's always... Always a plus in recording territory. Very impressive. Yeah. yeah. To do that in live. Yeah, always a cool. plus. Ryan yeah. and I, we like sat for a couple of weeks and went through the songs and uh, kind of talked through them. Um, and because I had the structures down about 90%, and then to actually hear them with the kit, because to me, it, that is where uh, the drums are going to take the dynamics, you know, I of got the you. song. Okay. So I needed to start there. And that's the one thing I can't somehow replicate. You know, did you have an idea already of like kind of w what you wanted in that sense? Yeah, dynamically, probably I had I had it, but I didn't, you know, um, have it technically. Like, and so that's I where you. I leaned okay. on him a little bit. And then also to to have some, he's probably the first one to hear most all the new songs. He, he'd heard some of them from the older band, but um, so bouncing them off of somebody else and saying, "Well, what if you did this here? What if we did this here?" And okay, and uh, so that was nice. And some of them evolved even as John heard them and as Gilson heard them. Because um, once Ryan got it, once we got done with Ryan's at Gilson's, I took my little home studio to um, Tahlequah where John lives and uh, we recorded them in my parents' living room and basement. And, right on. Uh, on a couple mornings. And Did you come all the way down to uh, from Tahlequah to do this? I did. Hell yeah, dude. Props to you, man. Well, uh, props to all you guys for coming out, but... Did, did you, out of everybody, does he have to travel the farthest? Yeah. Damn, yeah. dude. Hell it's yeah. always been Thanks the case. For coming. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> basis is always last in the line of, uh, you know, I guess that's how it goes. And, yeah. and back in the day, I always had the biggest vehicle, so I had to haul everybody's crap. Too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Do you still have that? No. What were they no. called? Because they well, don't make them anymore. Okay, so it was a Land Rover. That tells right. you how long, how long wow. lasting yeah. of a vehicle it was. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. We're at in the Tahlequah area. Where do I live in Tahlequah? Yeah, yeah. It just you don't have to. I'm not asking for your ad. Don't dox yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. Three, Drop a pen. And when are you usually <laughs> home? Yeah, later? So yeah. So I'm sure how most of your listeners will know Tahlequah is by the ever famous Illinois River, right? And crazy float parties on the weekend. So I live about three and a half miles uh, west of the river. So oh, okay. So you're per yeah. Okay, you're. You're not too far from uh, party land then. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. This, so that's what I was kind of curious about was like, you know, cause there's, I've been to a number of the, the resorts is that's what you want to call them up there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's definitely like I could see being very close to here would get pretty old pretty fast. <laughs> um, but, uh, there's also some cool stuff that happens up there. I know there's like diamond head that happens up there and there's a couple other, um, smaller festivals that happened up there and stuff. And so have you ever been to any of those or gone to any of those cared to go to any of them? Some of them kind of like, ah, I always, I, like find liver. I always find out about stuff too late. Yeah. I got <laughs> That's you. always my problem. I got so you. Like, well, crap. I missed that. Right on. Okay. That's just curious. I know it's, that stuff happens up there yeah, quite a yeah. bit. So we went up there, um, me and Aaron and a buddy of ours went up there. God, what, when, what time of year was it when we went up there? Like, it was like beginning, it was like June. It was oh, like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, but it was like still rainy season. So. It was rainy. Nobody the, else was it was there. pretty, the river was pretty violent at that point. It was still kind of cold. Um, raccoon stole our sun chips. Raccoon stole our sun chips. That's as we true. were, as I was like, I got the tin out beforehand to dry out. I load it all up. I'm like, 
barely fits in my car in the trunk of my like little tiny Lexus that we were driving up there, old ass Lexus. And I was like, I don't have any room. It's not going to rain. I don't need the rain tarp. And then it rained and I definitely needed the rain tarp. And so we sat, we slept in the Lexus, our buddy Gage, God rest his soul. He's still alive, but you know, (laughs) I hope <laughs> that he did a bunch of edibles and watched Dune last night. So oh, let's well, hope he made, hope he's made it. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unless he tried to like, yeah, dig into some. At least that was his excuse to, for not coming to the gig. Is that what you were going to do? Or was yeah. it a festival? Well, no, we float. We okay. just, we just floated the river. Um, but yeah, man, we, that was a long night. Cause like I didn't have enough gas to just leave the car running the whole time. So about every 15 minutes, I just kind of wake up and turn the car off and then, Gage was like, I can't sleep. And he's in the back seat. And he, he said it with that voice too. Cause he's anyways, he's like rolling around. And so the car will go. <laughs> yeah, we, we weren't prepared. That was, yeah, that it was, was a long, that was a, that was a long so, trip. Hopefully you don't go to the Illinois and have that experience. No, <laughs> I, I sleep in my nice, comfortable bed. There you go. Okay. Yeah. More prepared than I, yeah. Got a house and everything. We're right on, man. Thank, thank you for making that drive down here. Thanks. And thank you guys just in general for being open to rescheduling and doing all that stuff because I know we've done it a couple times. So sometimes it's really easy to get discouraged and be like, ah, you know, no, that was all, that you know, was all but, on us and really Gilson. So. Well, okay. Yeah, like, well, like I said, buddy, you're on thin ice. Way to go, Gilson. I'll, I'll plan my uh, baby's birth a little better next time. Thank you. Please do. Please do. The, um, so you, just the one album, right? But you've got to have... Um, do you guys have plans to do another one or not, not trying to like get you to, you know, I'm not like, come on, reveal all your secrets here on the pot or anything like that. But yeah, we have, I have a lot of secrets, so I definitely don't want to do that. You look like well, a mysterious yes. guy. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what Adam is doing. He's out there, you know, writing the next song. <laughs> he was, he said, <laughs> he something. was so busy. He He's, couldn't possibly, well, he said something just a second ago and he like wrote, said it into his phone. So he was like, I'm going to keep that. Some, some lyric. He was like, I think I'm going to keep that. Nice. Um, yeah, Adam. The uh, what, what'd you ask me? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I got lost. <laughs> Adam, is oh, always what's infiltrating next? our thoughts. <laughs> what's next? Um, yeah, actually, we were talking about that last night at the show because um, uh, John was saying we need to add a couple more songs to the to the set list. We've, we're just doing the ten right now from the album, and, right on. And uh, I have been writing a little bit and. Uh, trying to get I, I told Gilson I said I think I got an EP coming okay I, I'm just point. curious and if uh, the band dynamic um it kind of influences how you're it, how you write and stuff like that it does um I mean for me it always starts with an acoustic or the piano uh but um mainly thinking about okay how do we want like if how would we want to do the next one would we want to you know do it actually live or do it as more of like a band would record an album okay. rather than the way we did it. Cause I don't know Gilson, if this was, you felt it, but like some people would think the way we did it maybe felt uh, <laughs> like we were stumbling a little bit. Not, not that you guys were, but like I was, I was like, well, let's, you know, when John was playing his parts, it's like, well, just kind of like this kind of feel. And, you know, you get that. Right. Well, it's a lot of, you know, I don't know. It's hard to balance that. Like, right. It, well, I it don't think anybody us. really does. You know, I feel yeah. like every time you go into the studio, it's a constant, you know, fight with yourself to be like, could we innovate more? Could we do even more than what we're doing? And it, I don't know. Sometimes that's where I think a good producer is like the key to being the voice of like, Everybody chill the fuck out, okay? Mm-hmm. We'll get it done, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what Metallica was missing with Bob Rock and that... I don't know if you've watched that documentary where they're like... Is it some kind of monster? That's not it, right? Yeah, that's it. Is yeah. that, that's it? Yeah, yeah, like the 2000... It was for recording St. Anger where, like, they're... It's, it, there's parts of it that are kind of hilarious in, in context, you know, thinking back on them and everything. Like, and they're in the studio and they'll be like they'll get so pissed off and they can't really explain why they're pissed off. But then, you know, Lars will be like, it's just so stock sounding. It's just stock. So it's just stock. And they're like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And they just get super James Hetfield just gets super pissed. And then well, one of the funniest parts is like, they just, they're super pissed. And then James Hetfield is like, I'm leaving. And he slams the door and then the whole screen fades to black. And it's like, James Hetfield had to go to rehab for six months or whatever, you know, and then he just comes back and he's like, what's up guys? You know, he's got like different haircut and he looks better and stuff. And he's like, 
how's everybody doing? You know, and they're like, good, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, Kirk's like, I'm good, yeah. you know, whatever. And then they go to, th- it, it like shows them in therapy, like trying to work through. Anyways, it's just all that to say, like studio time is a weird time. It can be. Yeah. And, but, you know, I think distance kind of unfortunately keeps us from, and distance and schedules and, and everybody, like everybody's doing a lot of different hard projects. Navigate, it is. And so, uh, but it would be cool to do something of like, um, as if a band was going in to record something. Um, I know Ryan, he's done that with a couple other bands that he's, he's done with. So, and that's how we did it in the past too. Uh, we did an EP back in 2008 and uh, recorded it more uh, like a band would, you know, everyone, although these guys came up with all their parts and different things like that, they weren't, uh, you know, in a band, they weren't like necessarily waiting on me to. Yeah. You know, I, you know so. it's kind of like uh you know, you, you, you've already got, uh, this, this map already kind of, mm-hmm. now everybody's kind of filling in that, that, right. those spots, but I don't know with the, uh, the separate approach, it's more like, you know, you don't even have that map to begin with. You're kind of writing it as you go. So yeah. And it's it can, definitely a little different and I don't think there's any right or wrong way. I was just curious to see if maybe how you're writing, if you were kind of thinking like maybe with these future songs, we might take a, an approach with that or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. And I kind of try to let the songs lead me in that like how um their feel and what they're you know what what they're trying to push towards like what does this sound like and and then you know you listen to really good albums i was listening to uh um one of neil young's albums uh and i was like wow it'd be so cool to mix this sound with this uh um other album I was listening to. So I get inspired by listening to the actual sound of the, like the whole thing yeah, uh, and how it came off. Um, and I just get inspired to be like, well, it would be cool to, you know, have an album sound this way or, or infuse these. Different so do you ever kind of look at what you're writing and say like, um, because me and Aaron don't do this. Like we don't listen to a song and then say like, I want to make, you know, like, uh, something that sounds like a, a Dr. Dre beat, mm. but with our influence on it. So like, we don't do that, but you know, like I listened to an interview with the guys from spoon and one of their songs inside out that I like, they were like, that's exactly what we did. We, they were like, you know, we were, I was listening to, uh, nothing but a G thing. And I was like, I kind of want to make that, but like in my style of drums or whatever, right. is that, do you No. <laughs> I don't necessarily do that. I mean, it, it it's just kind of whatever whatever comes of the work of sitting down and, okay. and trying to figure out a melody or figure out a chord progression. Um, you know, whatever sparks that interest. For me, it's got to at least interest me. Right on. Um, and a lot of it is a melody. Like, and then I'll I'll get my iPhone out and record it, and and then listen to it over the next couple of days to see if it has any weight to it. Um, and uh, <laughs> I saw something that's like creativity is like you think something's amazing and then you're like, oh, that's good. And then you're like, this is total crap. And then it rises back up to be like, okay, yeah, I think it's, this it's will like work. The, the stages of grief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I go through that um, where, uh, and, uh, but, but yeah, I think the next go around will be, I want it to be different. Um, but I also, I feel like we, we achieved, we achieved way more than what I thought it was going to be when I was just, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, the record sitting. sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It sounds good. It sounds. And that's, that's testament to these guys. And then, and then Gilson, you know, what I take for granted is, uh, what I, when we did our drums that night, um, I, I've known Ryan for over a decade now, but Gilson, I met that night and I took for granted how quickly he caught on. Um, and then like when we were done, Gilson, when we were like mixing and, and mastering, I was thinking, you know, we don't really like know, like we haven't spent a whole lot of time together creatively to be so right on with what we're doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like to me, yeah. it, Gilson just got that brain. He baby. does. He does. And uh, that is something that he can, I felt, I felt really comfortable in the studio with him uh, because unfortunately I had to do a lot of different, like it took so long because I did all, Adam didn't record with this. I didn't have, know him at the time and so um uh, a lot of the guitar parts and key parts uh, are me which 
that you know when you think of when you ask me what would I like to do different I think less me on the album yeah because <laughs> I hear a lot of me <laughs> yeah I remember uh that after we th- we did the drums in like two sessions like super quick they were like That's four or five hours fast. each yeah. yeah yeah uh really quick and then uh I didn't hear from you for a while, and I was like, I wonder what ever happened to to that guy and that record. Because <laughs> man, those tracks those tracks sounded so good, like the scratch tracks and just the drums, like they sounded amazing. Uh, and then, however many months later, I heard back from you, and you had bass, all these keys parts, and so you were definitely working on it. Yeah, it was you know, and uh, the side of you know. Sounds like it's been a real labor of love. It, it was, for sure, because some of the songs have been with me for a long time. Um, so I already knew. I mean, I had, they were like old friends. Like, I knew where this right. this one was going to go. Like, Madeline, I knew exactly what that was. and uh, But some of them weren't as fleshed out. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, the next go around, get a real keys player. The next go around less guitar of luke and <laughs> it would uh and, well and, you know and there's when some you lose some, yeah that's you know? right and some of the songs you know that have been coming are are uh they're gonna be a different style not like you know i'm having my uh you're not doing any synth pop stuff no and and Damn. it's not gonna be a concept album i'm not going for that you know like Damn. but but they Shoot definitely all my favorite <laughs> <laughs> no i love all those things but uh, that's like you do your first album and then the second one's like, we got to do a concept album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20 songs. It's what the people want. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, double LP. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or maybe triple. But no. That's how you turn to a prog band. Right, exactly. <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I, I can't do that because, I mean, for me, it all, like, it has to start, I have to believe in the song. So I don't, jam band would be tough for me. That's just not where right. I come from and, uh, and it's not what I'm drawn to, although I, it's like when I hear that, I'm like looking at something I don't understand. Right. So it is uh, a different, I don't know, man. I, I've listened to my great share of jam bands, some legendary ones like fish, you know, and some, right. uh, other ones that are, you know, on their way to legendary status. And I just, I have a hard time, Like it's like you said, really connecting with them. I don't know. It's, you, re- you respect it. And like, it's awesome from afar, but like as far as and I don't want to feel like that. Like I want to be, I want to be up there, just like right, nodding my head, you right. know, wide eyes, stoned off my gourd, just enjoying the shit out of fish. But I just can't, dude. Right, I just can't. I don't know what it is, man. But John's like, well, you guys just aren't well, real fan. Well, you know? John, John comes. John comes from jazz, and Adam comes from jazz, and so yes, we're talking. Like blasphemy. To- oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking with rage. Yeah. <laughs> John Ryan, have you guys uh, been in a uh, studio before recording any different projects, stuff like that? So this wasn't your first. Okay, wasn't like your first time or anything like that. Yeah, Ryan. I'll, I'll you know let's speak for you, but like Ryan, he's wrapping up an album. I don't know if you care. If- you can cut that out if if Ryan gives me the glare. But he's working <laughs> on an album of his own, and like he's recorded. What's the What's the name of the project? Oh, it's very, it's very young still. It's in the process. Oh, okay. There's no name, okay. like okay. just gotcha. the songs. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Well, keep up. us posted. Yeah, For we'll sure, have yeah. we'll have solo Ryan out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. That'd be cool. And like. That I think a lot of the, a lot of these guys have such an appreciation for. It's funny you asked like what their favorite albums are. It's funny to sit and listen to it because all of them are I think drawn to songwriting in, in the end. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. You guys may disagree. Agree, but. Uh, good bass players that's all that's all john cares about <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> give me the solo to new york minute which is amazing by the way i think that's the first time i ever heard like fretless bass john and i can remember playing zelda speaking of video games and listening to hell freezes over over and over and nice. over uh, that's Fantastic. how i learned how to sing was playing to nintendo and listening to uh eagles Man, new york minute is my favorite baby. eagles song i love that song. new york minute yes i love it so much the uh it's a it it's a solo song. It's a it's it, a Don Henley song, right? Yeah. But when yeah. they play it on, but they play it live. They, oh yeah, the, 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 the version I get to know and like is the uh, live version. That's what I heard when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 that was okay. yeah, yes. yeah. I know Don Henley did the yeah. That was that was a really good album he put out. That was oh, yeah. I think whatever was something Beast. Yeah, uh, the Perfect Beast. I think that's I don't know which one, but anything yeah. Don Henley his does, his like. solo album was or his solo 
career was so good with Boys of Summer. And, yes. Uh, you know, Mike Campbell wrote that song. Yes, I did know that. I saw that on YouTube. He wrote YouTube. that for Tom. He, well, he didn't write, but he wrote it, pushed it over to Tom he pushed Petty. It, and, and he, he rejected like, it. He rejected oh, it. Wow. And like, I don't uh, think this Don sounds Haley like the, I don't think this sounds like the heartbreakers. And guess yeah. what? He was right. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was a bad mamma jamma dude. He knew exactly what he was doing. That's oh, true. Yeah. That's true. Push that over to Don. Yeah, Boys of Summer rips, man. The Atari's. You guys listen to the Atari's version mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. The pop punk. Pop I was at SMB the other day, and they had, you know, they play those old videos yeah, at the right, Burger yeah, Joint. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that came on. And yeah. it's good. It's so good, man. We yeah. want to, we, I can't, d those notes in the chorus that he hits are just out of my range, so I can't hit it. Otherwise, I'd cover the shit out of it. I'll put it in C standard. Then we can do it. Do you guys, <laughs> do you guys consider it a baseball song? Uh, Hell no, I don't consider it no baseball <laughs> I heard the, song. I heard that question the other Boys day. of Summer. Oh, uh, for some reason in my head, I was thinking of New York Minute still. I, like, <laughs> I don't see that as a baseball song, but, but Boys of Summer, possibly. Yeah, I can kind of get behind that, maybe. I don't want to see it as a baseball <laughs> song, but now that you brought it up, I, uh, like I'm forced to confront that reality it that just, it's probably a baseball song. No, I don't think it is. I think it just uses the phrase. But somebody asked me that the other day. Yuck. <laughs> so I thought I'd throw it out there. Don't <laughs> Doesn't my Saturday ruined? <laughs> The uh, cut the podcast. We're, yeah. we're done. <laughs> Get him out of here. The uh, well, what's next for for Luke Roundtree and Co? Yeah, what's, uh, what do you guys got in the pipeline? We've got a show uh, in June um, coming up, and at the Opolis in Norman, and then Very cool. uh, we're hoping just to play more shows and. Um, Get get a little bit more attention and just hopefully get a get gig a, in Tahlequah. Yeah, yeah. Get a gig yeah. In yeah. Please, <laughs> this is let a me ask for help. you guys this just random question: Do you have any um, favorite merch? From any uh, that you've ever gotten from like any bands, any anything like that, light switch Coos covers or anything. Koozies yeah. are pretty cool. Koozies. Yeah. I've got an awesome one. Yeah, I want to hear it. So when I was like in third grade, Montley Crew, my parents got me a Montley Crew T-shirt, and I rocked that shirt. Like, Hell yeah! Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so you still have the Motley Crue shirt? I don't. I should uh, be targeting I wish third I graders. Yeah. <laughs> that should be my target demographic. I'll get a bunch of small tees. Okay, yeah, I'm just curious because, like, I've, I've just been trying to kind of dive into like unique merch ideas, unique things that people have that are, you know, I'm basically looking for the unicorn. Something cheap, something small, something I could potentially make myself. Hey, corn dogs, lighters. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Lighters are especially a good because one. of how how often people pocket other people's lighters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Around. There we go. Okay, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Luke, you got anything? No, I don't think so. Um, I just have t-shirts. I'm like stuck in tradition. No, I don't think. I don't, dude, a good t-shirt's like yeah. moths to flames, baby. I had a sticker from a band that I put on my guitar case of my first. My very first guitar, which was an Epiphone Les Paul, you know, he couldn't afford the real Gibson <laughs> Les Paul, so he had got the. Uh, I think it was a Wallflowers sticker. I saw nice. them in oh, Missouri sweet. with Leonard Skinnerd. Nice, odd, interesting, interesting pairing. Yeah, very odd, interesting, interesting for sure. And they like, I don't know if the festival had just like standard um, singers on stage, but every band had this group of like women singers, <laughs> and like they called themselves like the. The Miller Lite girls or something like that. If you play at the stage, you got to play it with was, the Miller Lite girls. It was weird. <laughs> was this before a NASCAR race or something? <laughs> it, was or? It, was, it was in Missouri, so I don't yeah, know. That's cool. <laughs> that's interesting. an interesting show, yeah. It was All very right. unique. Well, cool. Um, so, you know, we'll keep an eye out for more shows, more interesting stuff, more more Luke Roundtree songs in the potentially yeah, in the pipeline. Hopefully we'll we do something soon. Keep an eye out for Ryan's solo album. Keep an eye out for Gilson doing cool 33rd Street Studio stuff and keep an eye out to, well, don't go to John's house in Tahlequah and stay there if you're floating the river. He does not give you permission. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yep, there we go. This is, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, do not forget Midsummer Mosh coming up. Uh, if, well, if you're listening to this, it will be tomorrow. So do not miss it. We'll cut this out. Probably never. Actually, this will probably just stay in there forever. Um, but Midsummer Mosh and we're going to do Pig Fest again. We'll have the announcement. You got to be there. You got to be there in person. Otherwise, you're going to have the most serious case of FOMO. You might die. Uh, other than that, uh, make sure to subscribe. Do all that cool stuff. Blah, 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 blah. It's in the description. Okay, this is Dylan signing out. Thanks for listening.